Good day, Kabebao, and welcome to our YouTube Live. For the discussion today, the topic will be on exploring new teaching modalities for modern-day teachers. Before we begin, please take note of the following reminders. Make sure you're registered to the webinar to have your e-certificate of participation. Visit certificate.webalgroup.com or ituru.org to generate your proof of attendance. Share the video using hashtag LearnAs1PH as our official hashtag to all our Vibal webinars. Experience learning! Kavibal! And now, to proceed with our webinar this, this afternoon, it is my pleasure to introduce to you our distinguished speaker today. Mr. Joram Kim Corquera is a graduate of bach Bachelor Secondary Education major in English at the Philippine Normal University in 2011. He obtained his Master of Arts major in Communication degree at the Ateneo de Manila University. Good day, Kabebal, and welcome to our YouTube Live. For the discussion today, the topic will be on exploring new teaching modalities for modern-day teachers. Before we begin, please take note of the following reminders. Make sure you're registered to the webinar to have your e-certificate of participation. Visit certificate.webalgroup.com or ituru.org to generate your proof of attendance. Share the video using hashtag LearnAs1PH as our official hashtag to all our Vibal webinars. Experience learning! Kavibal! And now, to proceed with our webinar this, this afternoon, it is my pleasure to introduce to you our distinguished speaker today. Mr. Joram Kim Corquera is a graduate of bach Bachelor Secondary Education major in English at the Philippine Normal University in 2011. He obtained his Master of Arts major in Communication degree at the Ateneo de Manila University. Currently, he is taking his degree of Doctor of Philosophy major in English Language Studies at the University of Santo Tomas. He has been a teacher for almost a decade and has already taught English, literature, public speaking, and research classes. He also represented the Philippines in various international research conferences about education and communication. He has been delivering CPD training sessions and teacher seminars across the country for more than three years. He is also into journalism as he has already experienced handling a number of student publications in various schools and universities, including San Beda University and, Uni and University of Santo Tomas. At present, he is working as a faculty member at the University of Santo Tomas Junior High School where he teaches communication arts and journalism <laughs> courses. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Joram Kim A. Perquera. Good afternoon, everyone. So today we're going to talk about various teaching techniques that we can utilize to adapt to the new normal. Specifically, we're going to talk about these teaching techniques no, that we can use to maximize the potential of our students and to allow them to become the best versions of themselves. Everyone, welcome to our session titled Exploring New Teaching Modalities for Modern Day Teachers. I am Mr. Jordan Kim Perquera faculty from the University of Santa Tomas, and I will be serving as your research speaker for this afternoon's session. When we talk about the new normal, of course, this is brought upon by the 2019 coronavirus disease pandemic. We all know that because of this virus, no, because of this pandemic, various educational institutions have migrated to the new normal, no, specific to the new normal setup of uh, in the field of education, which is, of course, uh, already no, in the online space. Diba? A lot of schools have already started implementing distance learning, specifically tinatawag natin online distance learning. Although some schools also of course resorted to using uh, modular distance learning. But definitely, no. either way, if we're going to take a look at it, one thing that has been really prevalent no, in this new normal setup would have to be the utilization of technology. 
right now the teachers are really no making an agreement with technology we continue to utilize technology because we know that our job is not only to ensure that our students are able to acquire the knowledge and develop the, the skills that they need no but at the same time of course to secure their protection and security away from the virus although right now in at least no, for the academic year 2022 to 2023 a lot of educational institutions already in the philippines have already started you no know, going back to face-to-face -face classes although we understand that even if we're going back to face-to-face -face classes we have to continue already you know, embracing Okay, this new normal setup. Kaya ito po ngayong hapon, pag-uusapan natin yung mga various teaching modalities such as blended learning, hybrid learning, high flex learning. And at the same time, we're also going to teach you uh, some uh, teaching 21st century, no? Uh, teaching strategies like gamification. Okay, so because right now, it is indeed undeniable, no? That using technology, okay, while we're teaching the students is indeed beneficial. In fact, let us try to see no, this afternoon whether or not the rules of technology in the field of education have changed. Before the current, uh, before uh, the educational institutions have only employed technology to reinforce established teaching and learning techniques. However, despite this advancement, technology has remained mostly a supporting tool in traditional classrooms. In other words, before, technology is just a supporting tool. No? We only use technology uh, to improve the process no, of learning, specifically to improve the way we teach and the way we handle our students. But right now, in the current educational system, it, uh, this system already requires an emphasis on applying, evaluating, creating and reinforcing knowledge. In fact, recent study indicates that technology is most effective when it is interactive. It provides real-time feedback. It enables students to use and assess their knowledge creatively rather than when it is used only for intensive drill and kill activities. In other words, no, if we talk about technology right now, technology is no longer just a supplementary tool. We use technology not only to motivate our students, but even the way we teach our students, the way we communicate with them, even of course in assessing them because it provides real-time feedback. In other words, no, the use of technology in the field of education in the 21st century, in this new normal no, for modern day teachers, definitely uh, very prevalent na yung paggamit natin nun. And when we're using technology, the thing here is that we might be experiencing yung tinatawag natin na digital divide. Why? Why is there a digital divide? We have to understand that in a specific educational community, members would be composed of two sets of individuals. What we call the digital immigrants, who are of course the individuals who have learned to adapt no, the use of technology later in life because they have no choice, diba? Like for example, ngayon, lalo na nung peak ng pandemic, we have no choice, right? We cannot go out because it's too risky, it's too dangerous. So what we use would have to be video conferencing tools, no, uh, social media to be able to communicate with one another and still to fulfill our duties and responsibilities no, despite uh, the occurrence of the pandemic. Right. Aside from the digital immigrants, of course, our students or even some of our teachers, the young ones, no, yung tinatawag natin na digital natives. So the digital natives are the ones of in its skills in terms of music technology. And since we have two sets of individuals in one educational community, most probably, no, we would be dealing with what they call the digital divide. Not to mention, our students are not just digital natives. They are members of the Generation C that is known to become the most tech savvy generation in human history primarily because they have undergone a digital transformation by smoothly incorporating technology into their daily lives as you can see no in the infographics posted in your screen right now no present day schools it was mentioned there that present day schools cater to generations each children age 6 to 18 years old this is primarily because gen zers have not seen the world without technology. In fact, 60% of them say that they collaborate, they like to collaborate, and they like to share their knowledge with others online. 
50% even mentioned no, that they cannot live with YouTube. What more, no? Ngayon na talagang sobrang sikat na talaga ang vlogging. And 93% of students also mentioned that they're very confident no, when, uh, because they think that they understand uh, the use of technology well. Diba? Moreover, we also have to take note that as new technologies continue to emerge, no, these Gen Zs okay, would always be the first to adopt them and the first, of course, to become too attached no, to, to in, uh, in, of course, in utilizing these specific uh, forms of technology. This is why there is no doubt no, that technology is really a must for schools catering to Generation Z. And if we're going to make use of technology, this might be the way no, to solve what we call the digital divide. Remember, if we're going to take a look at this picture, no, it's hard for the students to learn because there's a digital divide. But with the use of technology, with the use of various teaching modalities like blended learning, hybrid learning, and then the like, we would be able to bridge the gap. As you can see here in this picture, no, nagkakaroon na ng tulay, di ba? Of course, we try to connect traditional and uh, the modern way of teaching our students, which of course is uh, uh, often uh, called no, itinatawag nating blended learning. And this afternoon, we're also going to talk about that one because we hope no that we would be able to eradicate the digital divide so that the students would be able to learn the best way in the new normal. But before that, we have to take note no that our students nowadays should also be taught uh, should you should be taught rather using technology not only because we're eliminating the digital divide but also because our learners right now are far different from the learners that we used to be before right now our learners no their their, their average attention span is only 8 seconds okay and this decline has been largely attributed also no to the nature of technology kaya nga pag sinabi nating technology talaga may pros and cons no hindi pwedeng all benefits talaga meron din drawbacks may consequences din no so the attention of the attention span of the generation Z is already approximately 8 seconds already so this is a few seconds less no than the millennials attention span which is approximately 12 seconds what does this mean no this only mean that every second, no, every instant definitely counts. Okay, when it comes to appealing to the generation C, teachers would have uh, less time to capture their attention and definitely no, would really want to make the most out of it. In another study, okay, specifically a study done by Darla Rotman, a pupil's attention span, this is what she found there. She, this is what she found out. A pupil's attention span in the classroom today is about 7 to 10 minutes. Harvard Medical School explains that this brain changes as a condition called acquire attention deficit disorder. So imagine if we're talking about okay, teaching them no, inside the classrooms, whether or not this would be done in a Zoom session or uh, using, of course, the various learning management systems or or among face-to-face classes, no, is still there is a big challenge already. We only have seven to ten minutes to uh, maximize, no, yung tinatawag nilang attention span. In other words, no, we have to be more creative and we have to be more innovative. Right? So this, of course, calls for us to be able to embrace changes. Because if we're not going to embrace changes in the field of education, then definitely no, our students would be left behind. Remember that for us to be able to attain academic success, we have to let no the red gear and the yellow gear move here. Diba? Ito, favorite slide ko to. I've been telling this to my other webinars. No? Every time I would be talking about teaching modalities, teaching techniques, 21st century education, I would always include this slide. Because for me, no, this sums up what 21st century education is. Right? So in your screen right now, you're seeing three gears. right? The red gear of creativity, the yellow gear of innovation, and the blue gear of success. The goal here, of course, no, is for the blue gear of success to move. But we understand that since we're talking about gears, if one gear would not be moving, the other gears won't move as well. So the goal here is that we become creative, we become innovative, because these are the two ways no, on how we would be able to, uh, to help our students attain academic success. 
So as teachers, that would be our responsibility. We have to continue discovering new techniques. We have to continue learning no, new strategies that we would be able to use no, uh, whenever we teach our students because this was really the best way for them to become successful. In the field of education, okay, uh, teachers would also take note that the Gen Zs right now, no, their physical brain makeup is different than that of the students 20 years ago. Notably, the region of the brain responsible for visual capacity is much, is much more developed. This is why when we talk about Generation Z, they are known uh, as visual learners no so that's why as teachers also no of this generation c uh students learners we have to ensure that we would be able to create no interactive mediums collaborative projects and at the same time of course maximize young visual learning because this is where they really excel so how do we teach now the, gen the generation c okay of course one you can still have short online pieces. This is the same thing no, that we have been using before. So it's still, a, but we have to understand that uh, Gen Z's, no, according to research, they still prefer to take brief online quizzes. So right now with the use of technology, this is very easy. We can just deploy the exams in our learning management systems. We can also make use of various applications like Kahoot, uh, quizzes, and then the like no, uh, to be able to assess our students. Number two, using teams or small groups. So according to studies, okay, the Generation C students prefer to work uh, in small groups no, because they really think that they can inspire creativity when they operate in small groups. Number three, of course, is active learning activities. As teachers, this is a must no, uh, because uh, it, it, it has been proven and tested already that Gen Z has a limited attention span, just like what I mentioned to you earlier. That's why as teachers, it is very important for us to be able to plan our lesson well. Number four, use of games. The use of games is definitely an excellent way okay, of to encourage students to collaborate, to encourage students to be more engaged, to uh to allow them to be more participative, no? Uh, why? Because they can become extremely active, okay, and intensely focused, no? If we're going to use techniques like gamification, game-based learning, and number five, of course, sabi nga nila, even if you're using technology, something that you always have to take note of, you have to uh always to provide your, your students these two things: caring and feedback. So these are some of the most critical uh, things no, that one teacher, no, that the, te the teachers rather, must be able to provide the students all the time. Why? Because when we show concern to our students' well-being, to their needs, no, specifically right now, yung kanilang mental health, no, they become more involved in the classroom. And at the same time, of course, they provide them more feedback, no, specifically immediate feedback, then they're able to correct their mistakes and improve, no, to become better individuals and, of course, to deliver uh, a better performance eventually. Okay? But what does Gen Z need, no, to engage in learning, no? So, kilalanin pa natin yung ating mga learners, right? Number one, okay, fast delivery of content with complex graphics. We understand that Gen Zs, no, they are known, of course, uh, for being, uh, for for uh, being kinesthetic, no. Yung 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 love for, of course, no, for these activities, no. They are hands-on learners who prefer to learn uh, by doing rather than being told what to do or by reading text. So it's very important, of course, no, that we try our best to uh, also design, no, content that would fit, no, yung kanilang attention span. Number two. They prefer random access, graphics first, connected activities. Just like what I told you, no, Gen Zs are visual learners. So they have, of course, no, a need for uh, speed and instant gratification, which, of course, no, could be uh, best done by providing graphics. Ako, personally, uh, when there are graphics, when there are images involved, no, the tendency is that I I, I understand things is here. So ganun din po sa kanila. Number three, of course, they're interested in using interactive multimedia. And this is primarily because they're really exposed to using technology. The technology is fast-paced and no, mabilis ang transition. That's why they also want that uh, to be, of course, to observe uh, when they're being taught. Moreover, these Gen Zs, no, 
Ayan po, integration of continuous grading, instant feedback, and clear goals. As teachers, it is a must for us to provide instant, instant feedback. I understand that checking takes time. But with the use of technology, malaking tulong po talaga. Right now, yung mga multiple choice type of exams, true or false, Morse type, and then the like, in one click, no, natsachekan na lahat. And like before, diba, your one paper, ilang minuto ka. But right now, in one click, all the papers will be checked. There are also a lot of applications where uh, you can have free item analysis. So it's easy for you to determine who are the students who need help, who are the students who need assistance. No? So, uh, and of course, who are the students who are really excelling as well. Next, uh, task switching has given them short attention span. That's why some teachers actually says, uh, actually claim that teaching Gen Z's no, uh, is hard because they are easily bored. So definitely learning must be delivered in smaller bites. And finally, learn more effectively when left with uh, uh, opportunities to solve problems and find solutions by trial and error. Specifically, let's say, for example, you're trying to integrate games no, uh, where they're able to solve problems no before they can move to the next level if this is the kind of strategy they're going to do then you have to expect that your students would really be more engaged and participative and interested as well okay moreover gen z's uh they have the ability to express opinion in small group discussions just like what i told you earlier no they really prefer no uh yung tinatawag natin na uh uh uh, working no, with small groups. Kaya nga, di ba, one of the forces also, okay, of course, and given by the Department of Education, yung tinatawag natin na collaboration. And of course, mentioned earlier, they prefer to work in small groups uh, and teams, no, and definitely flexibility to learn in the, in the way that best works for them. Because they really want learning to become personalized because it allows them to be more reflective and at the same time, independent. So obviously, you know, with everything that I've mentioned, one thing that we can really maximize no, to address all, this, all these concerns no, would have to be the use of technology. But before we talk about technology, before we continue uh, digging deeper you know, with, when it comes to integration of technology, let us try to talk about 21st century teachers first, 21st century education. What is a 21st century teacher? According to Alex Vitrella, 21st century teachers are learning facilitators. Gone are the days that we deliver a lot of le long lectures. Right now, we only facilitate activities. We design assessment tasks that the students can perform, okay, that the students can do no to for them to be able to develop the skills and acquire the knowledge okay it should be student-centered number two of course content expert definitely okay it is a must for us to understand and to know what we're trying to say right third collaborative leader we have to continue working with the administrators with the parents diba? Sabi nga nila, triangle yan, diba? you have the students the parents and the teachers, and that if we work together, you know, if the home and the school would work together well, then we expect that our students okay, would be able to gain academic success. And finally, of course, it is a must for us to become culturally competent educator. Napakalaga naman po yan because as teachers, we understand that we do not only focus on skills acquisition, but also on moral formation. Right? So that is a 21st century teacher. No, so now let's try to continue looking at this one. What about the roles of teachers? In the traditional model, who are we? No, who are we? Right? So in the traditional model, teachers are known as providers of knowledge. Right? So students receive nearly all instruction from one or more teachers who usually spoke from the front of the classroom while listening, while students sat passively in their seats listening while hoping to absorb all the information. It's a one side uh approach no where the teacher does all the talking and the students of course will only sit and listen okay however no this is not already the role of teachers right now in the 21st century this is not the rules this is not uh, this is not the role already of a modern day teacher because in the 21st century teachers are no longer the only source of information there are a lot of sources of information it could be the materials that we provide as educators mm -hmm. it could also be the students themselves okay their laptops and other equipment no that we use of course to educate to educate them in the 21st century 
students no, become active pursuers of knowledge. Specifically with techniques like blended learning, hybrid learning, these students assume greater control and a more active role in their learning. Put in mind that students must always be responsible for their own learning. Hindi na po tayo nag spoon feeding. That's a 21st century education na po ito. It should be student-centered and not teacher-centered no, anymore. Okay, in fact, some learning even involves teachers providing instruction at a brick and mortar location and some students are learning independently at computers. So ito na try na natin to, no. And later of course we'll continue to talk about uh using technology specifically of course in delivering instruction. But before we talk about that one, let us try to talk about first Gen Cs, no? Kasi pinag-uusapan natin 21st century education. Karina, pinag-uusapan natin the Generation C. So right now, let's talk about uh, how to teach no, the Generation C in the 21st century. So right now, uh, we're, I'm going to talk about brain-based learning. So when I say brain-based learning, uh, this technique refers to the teaching methods, lesson designs, and school programs that are based on latest scientific research about the brain, how the brain learns including such factors as cognitive development, how students learn differently as they age, they grow, they mature socially, emotionally, and cognitively. In other words, the brain-based education is a deliberate application of tactics based on scientifically validated concepts. It focuses on how the brain learns in a natural way and is based on what we currently know about the structure and function of the human brain at various stages of development so i have here with me you know some of the principles of brain-based learning one would be the brain's uh, time clock here we have to understand that since our students have short attention span it's very important that teachers create a variety of instructional activities that require no more than uh, around 10 to 15 minutes of concentrated uh, of focus no, uh, of, of, of a i mean uh as much as possible activities should be done no uh, should be finished already in not not more than in not more than 15 minutes eh, dapat mabilis ang pacing natin no mabilis ang transition natin second will have to be repetition because information conveyed to these learners no uh they they love uh, that this be reinforced okay, by creative repetition of content Third, of course, we all know this one already that we should design activities okay, that would engage students no, in various mental workouts okay, because we uh, understand no, that research already uh, have proven a lot of times no, that active learning results to meaningful experiences that would allow students to really no, uh, develop and improve their capabilities. Next, of course, as visual learners, images would be part no, of this specific principles. It's very important that we utilize visuals, diagrams, textual aids, no, and other supporting materials. Novelty is also important. We have to be able to create no, and observe uh, this specific thing uh, whenever we create assessment tasks, assignments, because this motivates uh, the students no, uh, to be able, of course, to perform better. Emotions as well, no? Because whenever we teach, learners encounter a range of emotions or reactions. And these things can help them retain no, and uh, understand okay, the content that we're trying, of course, to deliver. Colors. So creating uh, instructional materials no, with the use of appropriate colors also uh, promote uh, uh better learning and finally of course we also have here developing thinking skills so of course we teach our students not only to become effective communicators but also to become analytical thinkers and effective no problem solvers this is a critical uh so uh component no of learning that's why we have of course to consider uh this specific uh principle at all times so in other words no if these are the principles of brain-based learning then we should be observing this thing whenever we're creating lesson plan because right now we understand no that gone are the days that we implement traditional learning it's already the time for us to embrace the many changes in the field of education or yung tinatawag nating modern way to teach the students or yung tinatawag nating 21st century education that is why no in the picture that you're seeing right now is a combination of books and laptops 
And today, this is what we're going to talk about as well. No? We're going to try to see how we can merge traditional and modern learning and eventually embrace this as a teaching modality in the 21st century. So number one, of course, we have here blended learning. So we all know already that when we talk about blended learning, literally, no, we blend, we combine online learning and face-to-face -face learning. So it is a strategy where online learning does not replace traditional learning. Instead, these two things are used complementarily together. So in other words, no, we can utilize yung tinatawag nating uh, online learning or yung use of technology no, uh, in the motivation, in the way we assess our students, or even no, with, during the lesson proper. It really depends on how creative on, and, uh, and on how uh, innovative no, we are as teachers no, in designing our lesson plans. That's why uh, blended learning... no is seen as a pedagogical technique that combines the effectiveness and social opportunities of the classroom with the technologically enhanced active learning opportunities of the online environment rather than as a ratio of delivery modes. So in other words, no, uh, here in blended learning, it is a shift already you know, from a student's uh, it is a shift already from lecture to a student centered approach because here the students become more active the the the, the, the activities become more interactive right uh, because uh there is there's an increase no, in student uh, teacher in interaction and at the same time with student student interaction as well okay uh, so in other words blended learning is really beneficial if we would be able to make use of it so with about blended learning there are three parts one in-person classroom activities facilitated by a trained educator take note of the term activities and not lecture because if we're going to give long lectures pa din po sa loob ng klase Sayang yung oras, no? Instead, uh, why, why not, of course, provide learning activities where the students can really assess no, whether or not they're able to understand the lesson so that, of course, the teachers can also try to personalize it, no, assist those who are in need. And at the same time, uh, yung mga fast learners support them also, of course, too, uh, by giving them supplementary activities and then the like. Next, online learning materials, often including pre-recorded lectures given by that same instructor. So when you say blended learning, we're also going to talk about uh, flipped classroom, hybrid classroom, uh, hybrid learning rather, and high flex learning. So all these no, can utilize yung tinatawag nating pre-recorded lectures. No? Lalo po sa blended and of course sa flipped classroom. Uh, why? Primarily because the use of pre-recorded lectures would allow students to already have an understanding of the lesson prior to attending the class which would allow the teachers no uh, to become uh, to offer flexibility no pagdating sa loob ng classroom because the students somehow has already an under, have already an understanding of the lesson and then of course no there should be a structured independence at the time guided by the material in the lecture and skills developed during the classroom experience so this is also very important because again blended learning is a student centered approach Right, so students should really be responsible for their own learning. So, uh, however, no, during this independent study time, we are there. We the teachers are still there. We're assisting them. We're helping them, of course, uh, gain academic success. So here, no, in blended learning setup, just like what I told you earlier, we do not need to provide long lectures anymore. But we are very important still because we develop online and offline course content. So, medyo dagdag trabaho siya because uh, we have to understand that since it's blended, there would be face-to-face -face and there would be online. So, we developed no content for the face-to-face -face classes. Somehow, maganda kung ma-maximize natin yung activities dito. And for the online classes, of course, no, we maximize the use of technology, applications, and then the like. Siguro, mas maganda dito, we can we provide, for example, yung mga watching of pre-recorded lectures so that the students can rewind and rewatch these lectures at the same time. Moreover, facilitation of communication with and among students, including the pedagogy of communicating content online without the contextual clues students would get in person. Guiding the learning experience of individual students and customizing material possible to strengthen their own learning experience. And definitely, you know, we have their assessment and grading not uh, unlike the expectations for teachers within the traditional framework. We also have to understand that in the new normal, okay, in the 21st century, we do not really uh, 
uh, give a lot of knowledge-based assessments, no? But instead, we provide skills-based assessments. Mahalaga din that there would be a variety of questions, no? Yung tinatawag nating uh, berong lower order thinking skills and of course, yung higher order thinking skills because uh, this is also, no? Uh, something that teachers must be doing okay in the 21st century right so this have this is of course blended learning so one type and of oh, blended learning ito po yung tinatawag nating flip classroom so ito po favorite ko to actually flip classroom as you can see no literal na flip di ba but here when they say flip classroom we're actually flipping no yung roles ng assignments and yung roles ng uh lectures why? Because when you say flip classroom, it is a pedagogical model in which the typical lecture and homework elements of a course are actually reversed. So this is why it's a strategy where in short video lectures are viewed by students at home before the class session, while in-class time is devoted to exercises, to projects, or to discussions. So that's why the value of a flip classroom is in the report repurposing of class time into a workshop where students can inquire about lecture content. So you can imagine if it's a flip classroom, students would watch a video at home, a recorded lecture at home. Okay, or it could also be a downloaded video, no? As long as nakita natin na talagang yun yung tinatarget natin na competency. Panonoorin nila sa bahay, pagpasok nila sa school, may understanding na sila. So in that case, pagdating sa school, workshop time na tayo, no? So if, if that's the, if that's the, if that's what you're going to do, then definitely, no, you can really have a very deep discussion because you're allowing uh, your students no, to perform hands-on activities, to apply their knowledge, to interact with one another inside no, the classroom. It should we say, of course, we're having face-to-face -face classes. Okay? Uh, furthermore, in the flip classroom, the, instructor, the instructors function as coaches or advisors. Okay? We are motivators. We encourage individual inquiry. We encourage collaborative effort during class sessions. We motivate our students. Okay, din talaga yung role na natin. And definitely, no, it puts more responsibility for learning on the shoulders of our students, which would allow us to achieve, no, the premise of 21st century education, which is a student-centered approach, no? That students be responsible for their own learning. All right, so now, allow me to share with you, no, the four pillars of flip classroom. Number one is flexible environment. Why? Because in a flip classroom, educators often physically rearrange the learning spaces to accommodate a lesson or unit to support either group work or independent study. Madaling galawin, no? Very flexible. Kasi talagang yun talaga naman ang, ang kinaganda ng 21st century teaching strategies at mga teaching modalities na to, no? Uh, it's really, uh, it really offers flexibility. Number two is learning culture. So why learning culture? Because flip classroom deliberately shift instruction no, to a learner-centered approach where in-class time is dedicated to exploring topics, so to really assessing your understanding, okay? and of course, creating rich learning opportunities. Third, intentional content. Because even if we're providing recorded lectures, these lectures, no, dapat po ito talagang napanood natin kung hindi po tayo ang gumawa ng sariling video. No, we determine what we need to teach, no, and we still follow the competencies provided by the Department of Education. And last, of course, would have to be professional educator. Flip classroom would not make us less of a professional. Why? Because the more nga na dapat mas professional tayong tinatawag kasi we are able to adapt with the innovations, with the many changes in the field of education na baka pagbigay na tayo ng mabilis na feedback, mas nag-guide natin sila, mas nag natin sila ng opportunities mag-shine and then the like. So all these no are very important things to understand when we talk about flip classroom. Now, let's talk about the next one, no? which is ah, hybrid learning. But before we go to hybrid learning, let us try to summarize first flip classroom. So when you say flip classroom, we can summarize it no, through these three steps. One, we begin with concept exploration, where we, exp where we allow our students to explore the videos, the recordings that we're going to give them. Then from there, we create activities no? and we create opportunities where students can make meaning. So they can, of course, have online discussions. They can uh, talk to one another, ask questions. no. If they're really shy to talk to one another, then they can go to Google, look for these things and that so that they would be able to correct their misunderstandings no? and, of course, understand things better already. Then finally, but it is a class 
classroom, this is where demonstration application happens. No, we provide them uh, problem-based learning techniques, uh, opportunities no, first to learn uh, by delivering presentations, expert, uh, performing experiments, and then the like. Right? So that is flipped classroom. Now let's go to hybrid learning. Hybrid learning, okay, this combines face-to-face -face and online teaching into one cohesive experience. Actually, hybrid learning is almost the same with blended learning if we're going to take a look at it now the difference is that when you talk about blended learning it's more face-to-face -face than online when you talk about hybrid learning is more online no, than face-to-face -face. right so it reduces the amount of sit time in a traditional face-to-face -face course and moves more uh of the course delivery online right so that's why this online interactions it was mentioned no, that these things can replace much of the physical communication between students and between, of course, the instructors, right? But it does not mean, no, that students would only be merely watching online lectures, no? Uh, but at the same time, of course, there are a lot of things that could be done online assessment, okay, activities, and then the like. That's why hybrid learning, just like blended learning and flipped classroom, this allows a flexible, uh, uh, this allows a flexible approach to learning process performed collaboratively by the student, the teacher, and the participating experts or institutions. And at the same time, it offers the students no, the privilege to understand and to explore the real-world issues through authentic learning experiences facilitated in an online learning environment. So when you say hybrid learning, no, of course, we talk about the classroom instruction time and the online components. No? When you talk about hybrid learning, the classroom instruction time, this is dedicated for students to be engaged in authentic collaborative learning experiences. Okay? So I think tinatawa natin na face-to-face -face session. So this is where they're given no authentic tasks, collaborative tasks, so that is easier to communicate with one another. So this is where they can excel no with independent exploration. Pero tayo, and then tayo, we guide them. No? We're, we're there to assist the, the students who are in need and at the same time to supervise the entire, uh, the entire class. So innovative collaboration, information technology, literacy, and definitely content maxery. While on the other hand, the online components would be, uh, of course, not used to allow a convenient approach of self-paced learning. We say self-paced learning is really flexible, no? Di ba? Kumbaga, yung mga students na nahihirapan, pwedeng 30 minutes silang inaaral ito, ina-access itong material na to. Yung mga students, sabi natin, they're fast learners in one, in one for example, a viewing of the material, naintindihan nila agad, pwedeng 10 minutes lang. That's why self-paced lang. No? So it also, it also allows, no, yung tinatawag natin na uh, flexibility, no, in terms of uh, is, uh, for example, that the time that they wish to access the information, yung mga bata na mas gusto pag gabi nag-aaral, mga bata na mas gusto pag umaga sila nag-aaral, and then the like. Okay? Moreover, for online component, it can include multimedia enhanced content and channels for ongoing discussion. Right now, napakadaming 21st century applications. Not only these applications, pero napakadami na rin resources online. All we need to do is to look you know, for these opportunities that would allow us to develop a more sustained no, and uh, a richer no, exploration of material para naman talagang yung mga bata ma-maximize din talaga yung potential no, ng pag-integrate ng online components. Right? So that is hybrid learning. So in hybrid learning, that the, the roles of the teachers have also changed. Right? So for hybrid learning, uh, the teachers play the role of facilitators by assisting the students whenever it is necessary. We design activities just like blended learning, okay, but we do not really give a lot of lectures. And of course, we do not really uh, uh, promote no, a teacher-centered approach. Okay, Instead, talagang ina-achieve natin no, yung student-centered approach. Moreover, the teachers play the role of instructors by providing complementary lessons in line with the online courses of the students so in other words when we talk about hybrid classes no it's still uh we're still instructors no providing a lot uh the what we're still the one providing all the materials kaya naman wag natin isipin no that technology will be replacing that because one of the fears no of teachers nowadays uh if i'm going to be very honest with you no i know some teachers who are really saying you know what uh the reason why i'm a bit hesitant in utilizing technology one, this is primarily because I have this fear that sooner or later, 
technology will replace us. But that is not true, no? Because even if technology has a lot of potential to be really amazing, yeah, especially when we integrate it no, in our classes, this technology cannot offer things, some things that we uh, can only offer our students na talagang kailangan nila. Like for example, our care, our passion, our love, no? Uh, for teaching. So, wag tayong matakot. Instead, of course, no, we maximize this because the use of technology would really allow us to become better educators. Right? Next, we have here high flex classroom. So, for high flex classroom, as you can see, no, there are students there inside the classroom, physical classroom, no, and there are students also there uh, na nasa Zoom session. Some schools right now have been doing this one. And we have to understand that this is also practical. Why? Because one, we cannot force some students to attend face-to-face -face classes. Some parents would be very protective of their students, of their kids, and there's no problem, no? Walang problema doon. I mean, we, ha we have to understand them. It's really dangerous. Some students also, no? Uh, let's say, for example, nagkaroon ng symptom. What would happen? Absent na lang ba sila kasi face-to-face -face classes, no? So this is a solution to it, no? Uh, wherein the teacher teaches, okay, synchronously, no? Sabay po. Okay? yung mga estudyante na nasa face-to-face -face setup, and of course, online. Kaya lang, if we talk about high fix classes, definitely, no, it, the setup should be uh, considered. Kasi dapat may camera na nakita talaga yung presentation ni teacher and nakita si teacher because it's really hard for the teacher to manage students both from the face-to-face -face setup and of course, from the online setup. Okay? So, it's all about high flex learning. Okay, the, high, the hybrid flexible or yung tinatawag nating high flex course combines both in-person or face-to-face -face and online learning. Each class session and learning activities offered synchronously online or pwede rin asynchronously online and at the same time in-person. And of course, students are given the chance no, to choose uh, how they will participate. Some schools have been doing this already. Sabi ko nga kanina. Although, hindi pa rin po sobrang daming gumagamit ng high flex. Kasi sabi ko nga, medyo madami rin kailangan isipin. Like yung setup, the camera, hindi nang pwedeng cellphone lang ng basta-basta yun. Second, of course, the internet connection. Kailangan may internet connection na mabilis para at least those attending online would not be having a headache no, na puro lag, puro pagbabagal yung connection na hindi naiintindihan. No? And at the same time, bukod dun of course, the design of the lesson, uh, specifically in providing activities. No? Because, uh, let's say for example, you're going to deploy uh, handouts no, sa mga bata. Ito, sa mga face-to-face, -face, pwedeng for example, printed handouts sa online, you're still going to send it. So everything should really be planned well. Okay? So, in other words, so we say high flex learning or hybrid or hybrid flexible learning, it is a mode of instruction that presents the elements of hybrid or blended learning in a more flexible course structure because it provides the opportunities, no, uh, the chance for the students to choose whether they want to participate in class face to face to participate in class online or to do both no pwedeng for example today online siya bukas face to face siya no so it depends All, some schools ang ginagawa nila may schedule talaga na okay uh, pag monday lahat lahat itong class ito online pag tuesday itong class ito face to face although kapag for example nakaset ka ng face to face nagka symptom ka automatic yung bata sa online siya papasok so that's also possible so it really offers a lot of flexibility that's why when you say high flex learning there are a lot of benefits one it can expand course offering and provide flexibility madali no madaling lawakan yung course offering and of course uh, uh, why because high flex learning really offers flexibility no, mas madali siyang ma-achieve with the integration of online materials. Number two, it can also lead to increase in enrollment. Why? Because the students need not be, uh, for example, in the Philippines, kung gusto nila mag-aral sa Pilipinas, kung may high flex learning kahit nasa abroad sila, or let's say, for example, nasa Luzon ng school, nasa Visayas, or nasa Mindanao sila, they can still enroll because they can still attend classes. That's why it leads not to increase in enrollment. Okay, third, it provides greater command over class attendance and daily schedules, definitely. No? Walang duda yan. And finally, multiple modes of participation frequently necessitate more vigorous instructional materials, allowing for richer instruction and providing additional opportunities for learning. Kasi nga, it offers a lot 
it really offers flexibility. That's why sabi nga nila, di ba? Uh, pag sinabi nating high flex learning, the teachers are given more opportunities to become more creative. Okay? Of course, to enrich their lessons. Kasi nga po, may combination ng online and face-to-face. -face, right? So, in other words, no? Uh, if we talk about high flex learning, talagang very beneficial. And one of the basic reasons for using high flex learning as well, no? Is really giving also learners an option uh, with regards to, okay, class, how do you want to finish the course activities? Okay, online, face-to-face, -face, in any given time, and of course, topic. So, kung kanina, kung meron tayong four pillars no, ng flip class, so meron din tayong four pillars ng high flex model. Number one would have to be learner choice because here, we understand that students are given options okay, between daily, weekly, and topical participation modes. Okay, ma ma nakakapili sila, okay, pasok ako online, pasok ako face-to-face, Okay? And the like. Number two, equivalency. Why? Because high flex model or high flex learning now provides learning activities okay, across all participation modes that lead to equivalent learning outcomes. So whether or not you're attending classes online or face to face, it's still no the teacher. One of the teacher's job is to ensure no that the learning outcomes would still be the same. Diba na? Target natin, kahit online ka, face-to-face -face ka, at the end of the lesson, you were able to develop, you will be able to acquire the same knowledge, you will be able to develop the same skills. Okay? Third is reusability. Why? Because here, no, uh, uh, it's very easy for teachers, no, to reuse, okay, various specific, uh, uh, various uh, uh, teaching materials, no, learning activities because it becomes uh, a material that could be utilized both by students from the online setup and of course from the face-to-face -face setup. And definitely accessibility. When you say accessibility, of course, no, it's, it, it really allows, iFlex learning really allow no, uh, learning to be open for all. No? That students, specifically with skills in the technology, no, they be given they be given equal access no to all modes of participation in terms of accessibility. Because kahit nasa online sila automatic, kaniyang ginagawa ng face to face, pwede rin nilang gawin. Right, so that's why it really promotes accessibility. So again, these are the four pillars of Hyplex model: learner choice, equivalency, the usability, and accessibility. Finally, we have here gamification. Okay, so this one is a teaching technique no, by modern day teachers. Why? Because uh, according to research, no, specifically uh, this one by Mind Research Institute, okay, a study using fMRI technology showed three areas of brain growth after two months of playing digital games. So development of, of abstract thinking, anal anal analysis, the skills, making choices, making predictions, memory, special navigation, learning, movement, na develop yan through gaming. So in other words, no, if we're going to integrate the use of games in the field of education, not only do we allow our students to be more engaged, not only do we allow our students to be more participative, not only do we allow them to be more interested, but we also allow them, of course, to develop these specific things. No? Why? Because when they're playing games, talaga namang it demands critical thinking as well. Uh, for example, you're going to play Valorant, you're going to play Mobile Legends. No? Pag pili pa lang ng character, kailangan naisip mo na, ah, okay, I'm not going to use this character kasi counter niya yung character na gamit ng kalaban ko. I'm not going to go to this area because it's really going to be dangerous. No? So in other words, no, it demands a lot of thinking, it demands a lot of planning, it demands a lot of analysis right so now for gamification okay it refers to the application of game design elements and game principles in non-game context that's why it can also be defined as a set of activities and processes to solve problems by using or applying the characteristics of a game so in other words though gamification is the practice of incorporating game concepts into non-game contexts such as a website online community learning management system or of course to promote engagement to uh attract the students to be more interested and then like although gamification is not only utilized for learning but even for other purposes why because the purpose of gamification is really not to attract uh the your audience so let's say for example in non-learning context no it could be to engage customers it could be done to engage workers and partners of course to motivate to share and interact 
but in the context of learning it allows the students not to be more motivated to also of course do their share right moreover gamification works because it triggers real powerful human emotions such as happiness intrigue excitement and accomplishment so and of course no kanina sa brain based learning nabanggit doon emotions right emotions help in memory retention no so mas hindi lang memory retention but of course also in allowing us the students of course to be uh, to exert more effort no into the things that they actually doing that's why just like high flex uh, learning no the high flex model gamification also has a lot of benefits one students feel that that they have ownership of their own learning so this is again the, the 21st century premise no uh, that students be responsible of their own learning right number two there is more fun in the classroom and when there's more fun uh, we expect that the students are will be more participative will be able of course to see the value of learning okay number three learning becomes visible through progress indicators because you can use your scores you can use your for example bar showing their levels no uh you can borrow this game based elements of course not to come up with these things Number four, students often are more comfortable in gaming environments, so are more proactive and open to making mistakes. I did a study on gamification, and one of the things that I found there is that whenever the students play games, they are not really afraid to make mistakes. Maliba na lang pag group work kasi natatakot sila na sila yung magpatalo sa grupo nila. But um, uh, more often than not, no, they're very eager no, na bumawi. Kasi di ba whenever they play games, pag, for example, their character died, uh, mar resurrect naman yung character and then given another chance, they will make sure that they're not going to do the same mistakes again. The same thing with uh, whenever when, whenever they play games no, inside the classroom. Okay? The opportunity to think outside of the box, tasks are no longer just about filling in a worksheet. What are the wider gamified consequences? Again, it, oils, it all boils down to how creative and innovative we are. No? Because again, these two things are indicators no, of academic success. Right, so today, no, medyo marami na tayong na-discuss from, uh, of course, from 21st century education to uh, blended learning to flip classroom. We also discussed high flex, no, learning, hybrid learning, and the now gamification. So all these, no, teaching techniques, all these teaching strategies are very fitting, no, uh, to be used in dealing with 21st century learners. So as modern day teachers, no, these are just some of the many strategies that we should be using because at the end of the day, I started with a quote, no, allow me to end with a quote as well. At the end of the day, the students of the future will demand the learning uh, that's a uh, support that is appropriate for their situation or context, nothing more, nothing less. So in other words, no, if we really want, of course, to allow our students to maximize their potential and become the best versions of ourselves, na sinabi ko po no, at the start of this webinar, then we have to provide them the education that they truly deserve. All right, so that's it for today's uh, webinar. Thank you so much for listening. If you have questions, please feel free to email me at jcorcuera at vivalgroup.com. Maraming salamat po. I hope you learned something from, this, uh, from our session this afternoon. Stay safe, everyone. There we have it. In behalf of Vival Group Incorporated, I would like to thank our speaker for today for this eye-opening and insightful learning session. It is an honor to have you with us. And all and to all our Kavival viewers, all thanks to you for your continuous patronage to our daily learning session. Don't forget to register to get your e-certificate of participation. The link is in the caption of this webinar. We encourage you also to subscribe and watch on our official Dibal Facebook and YouTube channel. Muli, maraming salamat at magandang araw sa ating lahat.